This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to the program. I'm Roby Brock. We are glad to have you with us. Joined by Governor Asa Hutchinson this morning. Nice to have you with us. Always good to be with you. All right. Let's begin with transformation. It still remains. I think you still have one more chamber to get through uh, with your, you know, your final big legislative agenda item. Do you see any hurdles to passage? Are you sensing that there may be some resistance in the Senate? Well, the uh, Senate State Agencies Committee uh, is spending a lot of time on it. Uh, I compliment them for the thoroughness in which they've reviewed this. Uh, you certainly can't say this has snuck up on anybody <laughs> because they've spent uh, multiple weeks going through it really line by line, and that's exactly what uh, they should be doing. Uh, I think there's broad support for this, as demonstrated by the uh, House vote of over 80 in favor of the uh, transformation plan. I think it has the same broad support in the Senate. We just need to get it through a committee so they can have a vote on it on the floor. What happens after it passes, and I'm going to assume that it does pass, and before everything goes into effect, do you have some sort of uh, transition plan, I guess, to make those things happen? Is that already in the works? Well, it, it is. In fact, uh, there's, you know, there will be a transition team uh, that will be set up to help uh, guide the uh, cabinet secretaries that will be named. Of course, we're reducing those from 42 to 15. And, uh, you know, they will set up the uh, transition plan for each agency. Uh, this will be something that will be regularly reporting, of course, to the uh, General Assembly because they'll have a great interest in it as well. But uh, this sets the pattern for the 15 different agencies. And the first thing you got to do is put the personnel in place. Mm -hmm. And then you got to have you know, where can you concentrate on areas of efficiencies, uh, better management of it, but you've got to recognize that, for example, you know, banking is in one building. Well, they're not going to move just because we have now them part of the Department of Commerce. But you will look long term at, as, you know, when that lease is up, is there a better way to do uh, the, the facilities to save rent money? So it's going to be a long process. Whenever I was at the Department of Homeland Security, I was there on day one with 180,000 people, 22 different agencies coming in to, together, and it doesn't, the transformation doesn't happen on day one. It is a process. I'm parsing something that you said just in the first part of that comment there, but might you make some cabinet um, position changes? I mean, might you put some different personnel in charge of some of the agencies that are already there? That could happen. Uh, I mean, first of all, we don't have a uh, Secretary of Commerce. Right. We don't have parks, heritage, and tourism. We don't have uh, right now an inspector general that's uh, over everything and on and on down the list. So these are new secretarial positions and so we will look at it all afresh. We've been very careful not to get personalities behind this. Sure. Uh, I've got an incredible cabinet right now. They've all done great jobs and so, uh, you know, there'll be some competition for it, but uh, uh, that's after we get the legislation passed. Late in the week, Senator Hendren rolled out um, a package that does several things. It raises tobacco taxes in a couple different areas. It uh, brings about an earned income tax credit. There's some other, other tax reform in there. It's revenue neutral, according to him. If that bill makes it to your desk, will you sign it? Well, l let's wait till what it looks like when it gets to my desk. <laughs> you still think there's big changes coming to it? Well, there could be, and that's what you got to be careful with. You know, if this bill gets to my desk, will I sign it? Well, let's see what it looks like when it gets to my desk. Uh, but uh, right now, uh, again, I compliment uh, Senator Hendren, but the other co-sponsors that are looking at ways that we can provide relief for low-income, moderate-income uh, families. Uh, that's always a good uh, a goal. But the revenue side is critically important, and uh, you know, this involves a, a tax increase. Uh, so I want def our Department of Finance to look at it carefully. I want to see those revenue numbers. Uh, if it is revenue neutral, then that addresses my concern there. But let's see what happens as it goes through uh, the But you're process. not opposed to the tax increase uh, on those tobacco products? I'm not inherently. In fact, I support. I've indicated my support for putting a tax on vapor products. That's important to uh, discourage uh, use. Uh, it's uh, It's... It equalizes it with uh, other tobacco products. So I support that, you know, the increase in the, uh, uh, the tobacco itself. Uh, I'm open to that. Uh, the, you know, amount and how that 
sets us in consideration with other states as relevant uh, debate. But uh, no, inherently, I'm not opposed to that. Uh, and we have to make sure that that matches what uh, is going to cost us. And let me just emphasize that, you know, the uh, raising the standard deduction and changing the rates, those are permanent changes that's going to cost a fixed amount of dollars that could grow. Uh, so on the, is the tobacco side, if you raise that revenue, is that going to be a declining source of revenue over time? Mm -hmm. And particularly as you uh, go to uh, T21, which raises the limit as we have in another bill. So we just want to look at it carefully, and that's not to indicate that I'm uh, overly concerned about it, but I just want to make sure the numbers match because we got a budget that's got you a balance. answers to those questions is exactly. what you're saying. So, all right, let's move on. You had a big success this week, too, and actually got to sign your highway package, uh, part of your highway package into law, mostly dealing with the gas and the diesel fuel taxes, the, the new fees on hybrid and electric cars, as well as that um, isolating some casino revenue and some other um, revenue sources there. What will happen if voters don't approve the half cent sales tax? Those laws that you just, those tax increases you just signed will be there, $95 million estimated for highways. Will you just work with the $95 million? Well, sure. I mean, you have to work with uh, what the, the voters said, and if they decline to extend that half cent, then you have a uh, $95 million plan that we just passed as supplemented by the previous basically $50 million plan that is still in existence. So we've still done a great deal for roads, but the half cent extension is a, obviously a critical link of the entire package. Uh, I'll be out there uh, supporting it, campaigning for it, and uh, you know, with the voters uh, understanding the need of highways, we're optimistic that uh, that will be extended. I'm, I'm talking to a Republican governor about all these tax increases. Does it concern you, well, tax it, increases? It, it is a little bit, well, absolutely. Uh, it is a curve, and that's why I'm measuring as we go through this session and, you know, what is the ultimate burden we're placing on our, on our taxpayers? Is it growing or is it less? And under my leadership, I want it to be less. And we've had $150 million of income tax reductions, plus the continued uh, reduction of the sales tax on groceries, uh, plus uh, other reductions that we're continuing to debate, like uh, increasing the homestead tax exemption to give property tax relief. And then, you know, Senator Hendren's got an additional package there. So you're looking at tax reductions throughout this uh, session, sure. We had the $95 million package that uh, raised uh, the, the uh, gas tax, three cents uh, per gallon. That is, in what I said from the beginning, that's the maximum that I would support. And you balance that with all the other tax cuts we have. These are net tax reductions we're giving and relief to the people of Arkansas. All right, let's take a quick commercial break, come back and talk maybe a little bit broader politics. You stick around? Sounds good. All right, we're back with more with Governor Asa Hutchinson right after this. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. Welcome back to the program. I'm joined by Governor Asa Hutchinson. Um, Governor, let's talk about some things happening at the presidential level. We saw, uh, we've seen a number of Democrats get into the presidential field uh, this past week. There has also been some conversation that uh, there could be a GOP primary challenge to President Trump. I think Governor Weld, um, Governor Hogan have both at least kicked the can around a little bit right there. Do you think that there's an opening for a Republican to challenge President Trump? Well, I think there will be some challenge in the primary, and you already indicated too, but that's a treacherous path because 
Uh, you look at what's been accomplished in the Trump administration, and it's what the base supports of the Republican Party, which are uh, tax cuts, which are regulatory relief, to, uh, returning more authority to the states, you know, a uh, dealing with uh, uh, international policy from North Korea, and then on the trade issues. And I think that is the really is the uncertain point here. Uh, there's, it's not clear as to whether Trump's trade policy right now is going to have a long-term positive or negative impact. We're worried about it. He's got to bring some of the trade negotiations to a conclusion. But whenever the fact that he has modernized NAFTA, mm -hmm. uh, that's a positive on his side. It still has not been passed by Congress yet. It hasn't, uh, but I fully support it. I think it's important and I think it will pass Congress. But he's led on those issues. So it's hard to undermine that in a Republican primary. And, uh, you know, I think uh, that'll be a slow developing in contrast to the Democrat side. The Democrat side, uh, they're off and running uh, more than you can count, uh, more than you get on a TV it, it screen. It almost looks like a Republican uh, presidential primary from 2016, doesn't yeah, it? So. They, they've learned that they've got to manage that. Uh, you can't have 20 people yeah. on the uh, TV screen at a time. So here you're talking a little bit more in terms of Trump's uh, administration. It's been more substance. I know you have not always been a big fan of his style. That's right, and, and I thought there was an important point made uh, recently by uh, former uh, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan, who said uh, the President has to campaign on his substance as to what he's accomplished and not his personality. And that is really an interesting point because uh, while I disagree with uh, some of his rhetoric and his style, uh, you know, I look at his accomplishments and say that's great, but uh, he if he's going to win re-election, which, uh, you know, he's got to run on what he's done and not because he tweets uh, or because he uh, speaks in the face of, of, you know, causes affront to certain people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, he's got to look at that and that's if you drift over simply making this a stylistic race while it worked for him four years ago, in re-election I think it's a different context. We're not going to see you traveling to Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina anytime soon. Uh, only if I go to speak about computer coding and what we've done <laughs> in Arkansas. All right. Uh, you are in your second term. I'm not trying to lame duck you yet because I know we've had this conversation before. What do you still have to accomplish in, uh, in this term as governor? Assuming that you get your transformation plan through, you will have accomplished a lot of your legislative agenda this time around. Uh, what is still out there for you to push forward on? Well, a lot, and uh, I want everybody to understand that I'm just beginning my, my second four years uh, in office, and as I begin this, my agenda this year is more aggressive than it was four years ago, and it's a pretty aggressive agenda four years ago. And uh, we're not finished yet, but if we get this uh, accomplished in this session with the transformation, uh, then that sets the stage for the next four years. You know, we've uh, raising teacher pay, you know, reducing our income tax rate, the transformation. I'll have to be working on that throughout my second uh, and four years. And selling the highway plan too. Selling the highway plan, so it sets the stage for it. But I would, uh, you know, expect a continued aggressive agenda, and we're going to continue to market Arkansas. I've got some. Uh, uh, we got some really uh, good businesses in the Europe. hopper. We uh, hope you're that going we to Europe this could summer. Soon. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be going to uh, Europe. Our aero defense industry continues to grow in Arkansas. We're going to continue to be able to promote that, uh, as well as uh, call on some other uh, good prospects that uh, we'd love to see uh, locate here in this state. All right. You think you'll be through with politics after your term as governor? Would count me out. All right. Oh, all right. I like that. A little news <laughs> on a Sunday there with the governor. Governor Asa Hutchinson, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. We're back with more, including our second part of our interview with Tyson Foods CEO, Noel White, right after this.